There are things in this world we cannot explain. Something hidden just beyond our view. Journey with us as we attempt to pierce the veil between our world and theirs. Join us as we pass through the doorway to the dead. Join us at WLFE-DB.com for upcoming shows and so much more. Welcome in, everyone. It is Thursday, June, I'm sorry, wow, July 8th, 2021. I am Dave. There is Jim. Hello. We are one half of Keystone State Paranormal Society, and this is Doorway to the Dead. The two-hour interactive live show on the WLFE-DB radio network. Tonight, Jim has acquired two great guests for us. Uh, Jim, correct me if I'm wrong. They're both psychic mediums, correct? They are. Excellent. Or excellence. And uh, they have their own talk show on Facebook known as Let's Talk About It. Um we were introduced to one of them through our friends, Brian Bowden and Alfred Santoriga, excuse me. And uh, we've watched their show several times and it's fascinating. They are great interviewers. Let's see how they are as the interviewee. So <laughs> without further ado, let's bring in our two guests, Katie Turner and Richard Rulin. Hey, this is so hey. wonderful. Oh, to everybody. Talk. I so know. Long, I know. I love this. Thank you so much for having us. I've been super excited to uh, be able to sit down with you gentlemen. Let me, uh, before we even get into it, let me say, lay out there for the audience. If you haven't caught Katie and Richard's show on Sunday evening, it's a real treat. It's uh, generally an hour and a half. They generally, sometimes they've gone over the format, and sometimes they have guests, but it's on Sundays at 8 p.m., and that would be on your Facebook, and as David said, so let's talk about it, and uh, the topics range through all, all arenas. They've got a great audience. I've always been very impressed by the level of the questions that the audience brings to Richard and Katie. Both of them are very gifted psychic mediums, but they come at things with a different perspective, which really makes it so fascinating because for my take, you get a much more comprehensive view of, of what's going down. And um, let's face it, um, None of us are experts. We've had a lot of experiences and we're constantly learning. And I want to thank both of you, not only for being on the show tonight, but also for the wealth of knowledge and, and good information that you constantly give the public. There's, there's so much misinformation out there or uh, just stuff that can lead people wrong. And that's, that's one of the things that we're really striving for as well, is um, even though we are learning, there are there is right and wrong ways in this. Uh, it's not freelance. And so uh, I want to thank both of you for your willingness uh, to um, serve the public like you do. Uh, you offer such great information. And I've won my mouth enough now. So we'll, let's... Um, Without further ado, if I could have each of you just with a slight introduction, introduce yourself to the group in case we have some uh, viewers tonight who haven't had the chance to partake of your show. Richard, you want to start? Sure. Uh, Richard Ruland, uh, been in paranormal investigations now about 25 years. Uh, started out in a really weird way when I was a police officer. Um, you know, and, and realized my abilities uh probably about 15 and 20 years ago and they've constantly grown in strength uh to me in range because of the exposure you have to the paranormal and the acceptance of what your abilities are so to me that has kind of brought me where i am today um as you know if you see my show i don't mind talking 
Um, <laughs> so to me, the show was it was you know a non-issue, not even not even a thought. And then to have a partner like Katie to come in, and Katie had been on the show as a viewer, and even guested once or twice as well before under an older format. And then her and I in this personal conversation got to know each other better. And I'll tell you, I've had some partners in, in the paranormal in my time. She absolutely stands top of the mountain. Top of the mountain. <laughs> Thank you. That brought us where we are today. We've got a lot of things going on and uh, a lot of things going on. And uh, it's, it's looking to be good. We, we do the show because, honestly, there's every level of paranormal experience in the viewership. We have people that have never done it. We've had people that have been investigators. We have people that run teams. We have, well, I mean, Katie's a, a television personality. She was a fan. I right. mean, so it really reaches every different level of, of you know, of take on what we talk about. We try to bring it to where I give the elementary level. Yeah. And then this one, you know, she'll pull out the South and be a lot more eloquent uh, about how she speaks. I'm a trucker, as I call it. I'm the trucker version of the paranormal. You know, and then she is the uh, the eloquence in the well-spoken version. We got to have both. That's me with the with, – oh, with yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> well, the two of you work – Work so well together. Uh, you're in, Thank you. Both in simpatico and just um, just pick up and and you both help complete each other. I think it's, it's a Thank really you. wonderful pairing. And like I said, between both of your perspectives, since you come at it from different kind of angles, yeah. Um, I, I I think it really gives a, a very complete type of overview to a lot of complex issues that we deal with. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I think really it's so important, you know, television has its place, entertainment has its place, but we wanted to kind of remove that fourth wall and, and let people kind of join us. You know, I hate the word expert, um, you know, I, I would say experienced or seasoned. And if we can learn something while teaching, that's even better. So for us to be able to break down that wall and communicate as as equals to kind of say, this is what we do. This is how, you know, I would I would kind of recommend doing it this way or perhaps trying it another way and learning how the viewers um uh you know do it their way it's, it's a learning experience at the same time so it's such a great time because it's a family environment and uh you know we're always learning yeah you know it's really neat this past um fourth of july um pam and steve barry who help us run the hoover house here um they had uh that uh, Saturday evening, they had the Jenny Wade house open in Gettysburg for a pro investigation. And it was really neat because uh, there was an experienced team. But then the other half of the group was made up of like novice or maybe one experience. And it was really, um, I really enjoyed it because the team that came in was very respectful of spirit and just, laying it out there and really a nice, honest approach. Like I know you've said this before, sitting down and having a conversation mm -hmm. with spirit, as opposed to like grilling it, like it's a mm -hmm. detective or something. And then the, the newbies really, they, they weren't taking what I say off of the show. They were sort of exploring things on their own. And, um, so it, it was really neat the way spirit responds to that and presents yep. itself. And uh, so I think in their own way, these various shows and I think the word's getting out. Uh, and that's very encouraging to me. I think we have enough, uh, you know, well intent. I'll put it that way. Pure of intent. People out there that realize um, how important communication is with spirits and how important it is to interact with them and not to um, essentially um, talk not to talk to them not at them and I think you know everybody gets excited going out there but now that there's such a, a grand group of people that are willing to spend and dedicate that time to getting to know the atmosphere getting to know the location it's not so much going in for uh you know your spins and giggles it's more to develop that relationship and I think um you know this industry is changing we as as you said we are we are um getting more involved we're not just there for the experience right 
Yeah, I, you know, and, and along that same thing, I, I think the quality of the investigation is improving as well. I mean, I know we have a lot of really fancy equipment now, and maybe we can do things that we couldn't in the past. I think we have a better chance of sometimes verifying what we're actually seeing mm -hmm. uh, with some of the new equipment, which is always fun. But along that same kind of lines, uh, it's not so much anymore like, please manifest to me or, you know, say hi or something like that. We're actually, like, you know, on our part, we're asking very serious questions about the afterlife. What what do you see? How do you see us? How do you perceive us? Um, and, and we constantly uh, get reinforced with information. And the other part of that, which we, we have to get better on, I know myself is documenting this making sure that we record it, write it down. We're, we're get we're real bad. We've had so many quality sessions sometimes and we won't be running a camera and you can't go back and be creative. It's not like the TV show. So uh, we're trying to become a little more disciplined along those same lines, but the information that's coming forth, um, I think it improves our world and our life's path as well as I think it feeds back to spirit as well. I think both sides gain in this exposure and communications. Well, I think honestly, too, you, you kind of got to bring it back to the basics of it. I, I've seen a lot of teams because I used to actually mentor, I think, five or six teams some years ago in, the, in and around the Tennessee market. I used to call ourselves the paranormal mafia, right? I'm from New York. That's, that's the stuff that I'm used to, okay? So but these teams were new, they were green, and they actually wanted the mentorship. But most of the times when I had conversations with people going into investigations that are new or join them in the investigation, one thing I always notice is the lack of relevance in EVP questions. It is the same thing over and over again. And how do you ever be able to reach some kind of rapport when you're in someone's house? Because I don't care if they're dead or not, that is their house. That's what they think. So how do you gain a rapport if you don't ask the right questions? If you don't ask questions that you're talking about, Jim, and if you don't ask the questions that actually will garner you some information. They've heard the why are you here question, I don't know how many times. You know what I mean? You know, why do you stay here? I mean, is that, I mean, how many times could they possibly have heard that question? You know, when somebody takes the time out to sit back and think, if I were them, what would I want to hear? What well, would I want to? One of the other aspects, at least, from my point of view is, um, and we've been getting a lot better with this part of, of it, and I've noticed it just in general in the field, uh, it's become uh, much more prevalent. Um, you have a lot more people doing the Hans Holter way, meaning they're doing a ton of research. They're doing a lot of research on the land, the location itself, the people who live there now, the people who used to live there, or whatever the case may be, there's a lot of history involved. And they're going in with a better sense of what is and a better picture of what was, so they can um, direct that communication um, in, a, in a direction that um, I guess may be more um, relevant to yeah. the uh, spirits of, of a location you know yeah. so so you've got more people doing the the historical research which is fantastic you know um because the more you know uh the more comfortable they're going to feel with you and the more chance you had to have of opening those lines of communication um and the other part of it that at least for me is a lot more people now are um coming at it instead of just um a spiritualist and I, I hate to like label it, but a spiritualism uh, aspect to it. A lot of people are involving their science now. Um, yeah. And I've been saying it for years, and Jim's heard me say it a thousand times, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It just changes form. So right. when this shell that, our, that is our physical body is gone, our energy has to go somewhere. And it would only make sense to theorize that that is what we're communicating with. Right. Yeah, agreed. You know, Jim, you said something so uh, precious, and I don't even think you realized, maybe you did, you said it, but 
when you're talking about the sessions that you've had, you know, you said, you know, you didn't have it on camera and, you know, you wish you put it on camera more. That's the pure intent that I was referring to. You weren't there to document them. You were there to build a rapport with the entities. You were there to speak with them. And that genuine discussion and discovery is what you were looking for. And I think doing that is what um, makes them want you to come back, if that makes sense. So, you know, when you're having these discussions with them, there's lots of times where we don't turn cameras on when we're doing investigations because it's not about the documentation of uh, the evidence we're grabbing. It's about the communication that we're having. And there are certain spirits. We had a, an investigation a couple nights ago, and it turned to be quite malevolent. It was We've been there many, many times before, and this was something, I don't know who opened Pandora's box or did some sort of satanic, something changed. Um, and people who, a gentleman who used to be in our paranormal team, um, who has passed, came and, and said his name, uh, you know, his name is Vern. Vern is not a well-used name, but he was, he built that rapport and he was protecting us. And, and so it wasn't about cameras. Yeah. It wasn't about, right. So I think with the way you guys do it is wonderful because it's similar with, with Richard and us. It's not about documenting the evidence. There is a scientific portion to it, but it's really building that relationship and gaining their trust. So they don't feel like they're being interrogated. They're being communicated with. Right. But Absolutely. see, like we, we had a situation a couple weeks ago. We had a public investigation here. We, we had a wonderful group. There was a, a, a lot of experience, but there were a lot of people, or newbies, and just a really nice bunch of open-minded individuals. And the one, um, the one guy and his wife were downstairs in the basement, and they were connecting with some of the spirits down there. And later we did a table tipping session and that same couple, he had, her husband had, a, a, his grandfather came to him, sort of like his fame, favorite senior relative. His grandfather was a barman, he liked his whiskey. And evidently when they had been down in the basement earlier and getting various stuff with their equipment, his, his grandfather was down there. And then he, when he was up here with the table tipping, he later then was revealing what he was doing downstairs. So some of the, yeah. you know, some of what they were capturing, so to speak, was his grandfather. And the funniest part of all of that was his grandfather came through in the table tipping and basically told him to search his recordings because he would hear his voice on them. Oh, in other so words, neat. one of the voices was Very his cool. grandfather. So I'm, I'm waiting to hear. This was just, you know, they're probably still dissecting that, but I'm really anxious to hear if indeed he got his grandfather's voice on one of their recordings. So, uh, you know, I mean, that's that's a level of that's a level of closeness and communication that I don't think we had, say, even ten years ago. No. And I, I sort of think some of it is the times we're living in as well. These are these are critical times, and I think the veil has gotten thin. I think there's a lot that the um, the other side is watching and caring for us and wants to openly communicate, and it makes it difficult if you have all this presentation of demonic or negative energies. Mm -hmm. I mean. Makes people afraid. Yeah. And um, the thing that I love that we've done in a short while here is we brought families together where the people know, you know, they they really feel it inside that they have connected with that loved one of theirs. There's mm -hmm. a message or two that gets passed along. And I almost always follow up with the people if they're local to see how they're doing the next day. And almost instinctively, they're they're invigorated by it. It's you know, it's it's actually a very positive thing, even if they were a little reticent in the beginning to engage, because mm -hmm. you know, never quite knowing what to expect. That's where we are, though, in this in this field right mm -hmm. now. And it's thanks to the aid of people with your skills. I mean, um, I am so thankful to Brian and, and that whole group for introducing me to you and Richard. Uh -huh. And a matter of fact, this is neat. They, uh, Cisco uh, contacted me this week 
And I think in a couple of weeks, we're actually with this new format, we're going to have a round table with Steve Stockton, Brian and Cisco and then with Dave and I. So um, yeah. we're, we're looking to maybe expand, you know, the interaction and we'll see how these things go. How uh, if this is a, a format that seems more uh, applicable, you know, for, for viewership yeah. and questions. So uh, love the New York group. And we, we're praying that the borders open so I can get you down. Of course, Richard, you have an open invitation here. Thank you. I, 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 yeah, I just I hope thrilled so. to Thank have you here. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. The one thing I'd like to do, because I, I saw the question come up. She's also one of our fans, too. And I, I like answering questions. I'm one of those people. I'm a little crazy like that, right? So Tara asked, you know, what do you do after you make contact with a spirit? Do you thank them or do you, I'm going to tell you, thank them. Okay, thank them. It is no different to me, in my opinion. It is no different than if you have somebody that won't talk to you, okay, that's alive, but then says something, you appreciate that conversation. It takes, and I've got this even on my Facebook, on my post, on my, on my profile, it says, you know, if a spirit even gives you a voice, consider that a gift. Because well, it takes a lot of energy to be able to do that. So I always thank them. Good question, Tara. And this this was my response that I wrote to her. What? Are... Yeah, well, why don't you just... Yeah. Absolutely. Agreed. Uh, you know, uh, everybody wants that magical um, thing being knocked off a shelf or the, the full manifestation, all that. And that's fantastic. Yeah. But just to give you an EVP of high or just to get that feeling of the hair standing up in the back of your neck, knowing that there's energy there, even that is a tremendous amount of energy. And for them to feel comfortable enough with you and the group you're with, if, you know, if you're not alone, uh, to expend that energy, um, that's, that's always something to be thankful for because, you know, they can recharge, but at any given time, they can only have a certain amount of energy to perform whatever it is they wanted to perform, whether it's to pass along a message or just to let you know they're there, or, you know, in some cases, very rarely, but in some that they don't want you there. Um, it, you know, they have a limited amount of energy at any given time to do those things. Right. And so when they choose to spend some of that energy in any way to communicate with you for whatever reason, that's thanks that you got to thank them for because absolutely they felt comfortable enough with you to, to, to basically like you rated high enough on there. Should I use some energy scale? Right. No, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Quite simply, I say it's a privilege, not a right. So it's not, you know, you don't have the right to communicate. It's a privilege. And, and you yeah. know, th you know, address it accordingly. So, you know, it's a privilege for them to even be able to do that. You think of, they don't have a physical voice box, right? So they have to, they have to create that energy field to ever, to even make that voice. So that's, yeah. that's, you know, that's pretty yeah. neat when that happens. It, it is, you know, and, and I'm real big as well about, and, and Katie and I talked about this and we are in full agreement as well. If you have the opportunity to go back to another the same location more than once, do that. Do that because that's your your ability to be able to build a rapport. I have a location that we manage tours in in Georgia called the Right Hotel. I'm sure you've heard that on my show a million times. I have gotten an, a, a, such a response from the entities in that building that I got from the previous owner who passed. Yeah, we miss you and welcome home. That's yeah. amazing, man. I mean, how do you how do you not enjoy that communication and appreciate it? Yeah, go back to the same place more than once. Trust me, there's good information waiting for you. Yeah, and I, I think there's that familiarity too with the spirits. They, you know, it takes they sort of size you up. I, I truly believe they can see. I don't know if it's an aura from us or they they can sort of sense the truth about us. Um, the person we are and whether or not they feel comfortable or safe communicating or exposing themselves to us. And so when you, when you, that follow back again, um, we, we've had a number of um, EVPs or various stuff where they've, they've witnessed, you know, they've come back to see us yeah. and they've even said that 
some of those comebacks involve uh, crossing back over. They've crossed over and they consciously or willfully have chosen to spend that time with us. Right. I mean, what a great compliment. It oh, is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for you, for you to sit back and, and to understand at the end of the day, you're talking to history. That's really what you're doing. You're talking to history, which is something a lot of people don't even want to think about doing. I would take every opportunity in the world, as I'm sure the rest of the panel would be, to take that opportunity to go and talk to history. My God, what could they tell you that you could not learn from? You know? And I've got to address one person that's in the panel that, that and, and yeah, Katie, you're going to have to handle her. Joanne Stewart. We're not talking about chickens tonight. <laughs> Talking Not about EVPs, there. Mr. Richard Rulin on several occasions has gotten EVPs of a chicken clucking. So it's a little inside joke that we like to to get on him because we say his spirit animal is a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, love our fans. I love our fans. Absolutely. Are you, you, yeah. I've, I've heard some EVPs that both of you capture. Just great stuff. I mean, uh, that that's what blows me away is quality on some of these EVPs is just amazing. Not only for clarity, but you'll hear dialogue, dialect. You'll hear, um, oh, yeah. you know, emotion. I mean, it, this is not just some kind of mechanized device that fires oh, yeah. across. And um, mm -hmm. I know I was going to ask, so what the heck? It just escaped me. Oh, it'll come back to me. <laughs> That's something I was going to ask. Um, we had a neat situation this past uh, Saturday. I didn't even know we were going to do investigations here, but we had had a Civil War reenactment group here at the house, and they set up a tent, and they had the women with the hoop skirts and, and all that. And so we did in the afternoon, we did a table tipping session to see if the costume presentation would you know, how that might affect. Trigger, trigger. Yeah. Yeah. But we, now, we haven't had a lot along the Civil War soldiers here. Um, we've had, I still think, the only one that has uh, come through and identified his unit and where he was. And he was involved in the Antietam campaign, not Gettysburg. Um, and it'd be interesting to see with more of the Civil War being actors and those people here, if that changes the dynamics, maybe we'll get some kind of influence. But anyhow, this young girl had had in the previous week, she had had in a table tipping session, one of her spirit guides came through and identified himself by name and identified himself by a scent that she would know he was around. And that scent was long stem roses of which then we all smelled long stem roses. So anyhow, she's wearing the hoop skirt and all that. Thank you, Ollie. He came through again. This is Saturday afternoon about four. And as soon as he came through and identified himself, what was present? Long stem roses. Everybody up on the second floor smelled it. And the reason he came through, uh, he identified a past life in this young girl. Gave her her name, and it was of the Civil War period. She was a woman in that period, and evidently her husband was killed in the Civil War. And he came out and he said which battle he had, you know, he had fallen in, and explained her family and uh, given names and dates and all that. So she's, of course, um, researching that this week. But we've been having. We've been having a lot of spirit guides suddenly presenting to some of the people. And um, I, that's the question I was going to ask now. Um, I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of experience with spirit guides. It's only recently that I became aware of a couple of concern in me. And could you give us a reflection on what spirit guides, how they might influence us or affect us in life and why they might choose to come through and identify themselves? Go ahead, Katie. This is first half. <laughs> um, okay. So spirit guides, a, a lot of people get guardian angels and spirit guides kind of confused or they kind of generalize them and say that they're the same thing. But really spirit guides are people 
that have finished reincar reincarnating. So they're done their journey on this side. And from the other side, they, they guide us on our, on our journey on this side. And so you have spirit guides that come in throughout your lifetime. Not all of them stay with you. They're there for certain principles or certain times. Um, but when they come forward, it's because um, you're either having an affirmation, you're, you're needing change, you're um, in a moment of vulnerability, or they're just trying to confirm that, yes, indeed, they're there. Do you know what I'm saying? But um, they're not something that can necessarily change fate, but they can kind of nudge you in the correct direction, or they can give you that gut feeling not to do something. Um, so, you know, a lot of people say to me, you know, is your spirit guide my grandfather? Or is it my, you know, my great uncle? And most of the time, no, it's not. It's somebody that's a lot older than that, um, and they come through. I have one gentleman that, that comes through quite a, bu a bit, and his name is Jack. He's one of my main guides, and he, you know, he's usually there when I get stressed out um, and there's another lady that comes through you know it depends on my situation um, but yeah that's basically what guides are oh great great and now here's, here's a trucker version of that because that would see that's she is going to have a new title called the paranormal news anchor that is going to be <laughs> going to be the paranormal news anchor uh, and, then, and then let's go to the guy in the field let's go to Richard because he's a dumbass <laughs> talk about like a trucker so it's it's really funny to me, and I've and I've had to explain to people, yeah, you know, a little bit, you know, they're older, like Kitty said, and and in a connection of what does everybody remember the the algorithm machine? They used to drop a quarter in with some stupid information in it, and it would pop out an algorithm of what you know things are. To me, there is a metaphysical algorithm. There is a, a rhythm that that spirit and the living connect on at a certain point. And each person that comes forward to step into that connection has a job, like Katie said. They have a job. And when that job is done, they go. So it's it's really kind of the guardian angel theory is what a lot of people pick up on, like Katie said. But for me, it's it's just when you're in need of something, that is what they fall into that category of. And then when you either correct yourself, write yourself, or fix it, they're gone to someone else. But they do have that, that chord or that algorithm matchup that I, I talk about that even aligns them with you. And that's, you know, to me, that's amazing. Like she said, they, they do have the ability to deter you from something or turn your mind away from something, you know, kind of get you in a different direction that you need to be going into. I had a reading with a guy not too long ago. It was just a random reading, and he didn't believe in psychic mediums. And he was just sitting there talking to me, and he heard I was. So, of course, that obviously opens up some conversation with people who don't believe. Um, so, you know, and I was sitting there talking to me, had his phone in his hand, and his, his grandmother is one of his guides. And she's, she was a great lady, really talkative. You know, and he just had a solid, just a solid disbelief in the mediumship that people have. And, you know, when I was talking to him, she was just, woo, hitting me with a million things. And everything was just designed to confirm who she was to him. And the final point that actually kind of made him sit down was, um, you need to stop doing that on your phone. And he was like, what? You're, you're looking for a woman on the phone with a dating app? Your grandmother, yeah. stop it. And I, had, I, mean, I know what's on his phone. So it was just kind of one of those things. It's, it's an infirmity. It's a confirmation that she was there. She's one of his guys. She's trying to help him make life choices, better life choices, because he was mm -mm, he was going the wrong way. And I told him that, too. And he was just kind of flabbergasted. And it just, you know, to me, it's just that's part of what the guides do. They do communi communicate with people who can hear them and understand them. Uh, you know, Katie and I, for example, I mean, I've done random readings for just just to make a person feel better. That's really what our jobs are. But it's, it's that the job that they can't get to you with their message. They will find someone who will when they come near you. I mean, that's how many times, Katie, have you had somebody just randomly smack you behind the back of the head to talk to the person sitting in front of you? Oh, yeah. It happens all the yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, it's really awkward, actually, when you're in the grocery store and you have a spirit saying, hey, can you give a message to this lady for you? And you're like, ah, oh, excuse me. I d that doesn't happen very often, but it no. does happen. Yeah, this was a Walmart. I, I, I tell you what, as I've gotten to know both of you and there's a, a number of other uh, really gifted and very generous psychic mediums we've worked with and done investigated with and whatnot, 
I just have the most profound respect because it's a fine line you guys walk. I, I realize that. And I mean, sometimes just with my minimum exposure to spirit, it's very intimidating. I mean, you know, I mean, you, I, I, I know a lot of times you really have to mince your words. Yeah. Um, to, you know, you might want to alert somebody to something, but you don't want to get them so alarmed that they're paralyzed. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, no, uh, now, do, do your spirit guides assist you when yep. you're involved in those processes? Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I, th I figured they would. Yeah, they do. And it's, you know, it's honestly something too that people mm -hmm. may not understand, but I always bring it up because Katie kills herself when she, she does a mountain of readings and does a mountain of things to help people. And she's been yeah. wow, look at me, like, don't talk about it right now, Richard, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about it. What people have to understand <laughs> psychic medium is that every time we do a reading, every time we do that, we give a piece of ourselves away. Yeah. Right? It's, it's very destructive to the body. Psychic mediums have a shorter lifespan than people who don't have the ability. And that's because every time we do something to help you as a person, we're giving our piece of ourselves away. Even if it's just a little bit of energy, we're giving that back. We're giving that away from us and giving it to you to be able to get the message you want. The only thing I always, I always wonder about people is why they all think well, immediately we're going to have a message for you. If there is no message for you, there is no conversation. <laughs> I'm really glad you mentioned that, Richard, because that's, that's one thing I harp about a lot that I don't think um, – the general public realizes is there is a price to pay in all of this. Oh yeah. You do give a part of yourself away. And maybe that, you know, we, we look at everything from life, our life here in this sphere. Maybe the fact that we check out a little earlier, maybe that ain't such a bad thing <laughs> given the state of the world. And maybe the fact that you're willing to unselfishly do that service and render that service that that has to put you on a higher plane in terms of a uh, higher vibration, higher education, higher knowledge base. And um, I don't know, maybe we don't have to hang around all that long once we've acquired some kind of uh, point to all this. But um, mm -hmm. there there is a price to be paid. And I know I catch myself sometimes very reluctant to engage in spirit. Spirit always takes care of me, and it does help heal. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not all negative. And, and generally, I'm, I feel better for being involved. But there's times when I have a real um, avoidance, like, you know, like a mentally avoidance type of thing. Is that something that um, – I know you're always working at being grounded and, and working mm -hmm. off of a base, and you know where your comfort is. But, I mean, I would imagine there's times, too, when you have to avoid spirit to some extent. Is that true? Mm -hmm. You can try. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, I think it's important to set your precedents and your perimeters, right? So um, just because you leave your, your car door unlocked doesn't mean somebody has the right to go in it. So there's certain perimeters that you, you have to set up and kind of say, listen, this is what I'm willing to, to do and what I'm not willing to do. Um, to go back and discuss about, uh, you know, there's things Richard had said, you know, not everybody gets a reading or not everybody gets a message. And I have a motto. Uh, if I'm not supposed to know, neither are you. And if I'm supposed to know, so are you. In other words, why would I see it if it wasn't supposed to change? If, if you know, Absolutely. your guides, if you were supposed to go through these things, then why would I be telling you not to, you know, look both ways when you cross the street, right? Um, but I think that, you know, with all of this, the most important thing is being thankful Again, we, we kind of go into certain things on a human level with a sense of entitlement, like, okay, I'm going to open myself up and I'm going to receive messages for you. We have to thank them. I still thank them as a psychic, as the messenger. I thank my guides for helping me out. Or if I find it, you know, it, it's, it's a little harder to get the message through or bad cell reception, I call it. You know, I ask my guides to give me a little oomph to help me to get the message across. And if it's meant to come across, they'll make it easier for me. So, uh, again, it's building that rapport and that camaraderie with your, the other side so that you know what they want and they know what you want, right? And we've also noticed, too, that um, I would say within the past five years, um, one of the main pieces of equipment that we use 
uh, our EMF pumps. And we do that so that we're feeding them energy to use, which wow. means they have to take less from us. Yeah. Um, right. And we've, we've noticed a significant drop in um, how long our quote unquote paranormal hangover lasts. Right. Um, it's still there because, you know, you're, you're making an intimate connection, whether they're <laughs> being assisted by you or not. And in any way you do that, it's, it's going to drain a little. But we've, right. we've noticed that since we started running these very large EM pumps, um, that are actually large enough that some of our more sensitive uh, psychic friends are just like, oh, this thing's giving me a headache. We're like, we're sorry, we can move them, but we, we yeah. have to have them on or else you're going to have a good time and we're going to be dead tomorrow. <laughs> <You know>? So, <laughs> so uh, but we've noticed that that has really helped out. Um, I was just curious, uh, as psychic mediums yourselves, if that was something that you had um, thought about and, and maybe given a try for I haven't yet. I haven't used the pump. I just kind of, I, I let the batteries and the equipment and I do let myself become fodder. Hmm. I, just, I just do. Um, because I want to be able to feel it. I want to attract it to my energy so I can feel what's going on. So I can work with what's going on. And I feel somewhat, if I'm using an EM pump, it kind of deters their attention away from me right. to the pump. So that's just my observation. I mean, that could be absolutely 100% wrong, but that's just my observation from it. Because I had a guy that tried one once. I'm like, I'm, yeah, number one, the EMF field just kind of went, oh, you know, but it's it's one of those kind of things where I felt it also deterred from my connection with them. We, they were trying to eat off the buffet, so to speak. We, uh, we also have an infrasonic noise generator that you can mm -hmm. modulate, and that seems to work as well. In other words, yeah. the... I guess, provide energy. And a lot of times um, we, we don't use it very often at all, but sometimes if people are bothered by the EMF, uh, we can use the noise generator on a low modulation and sort right. of avoid that like you were describing, Richard, and yet still get that same kind of energy boost so they're not sucking it right out of us. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I actually developed, a, I developed it, I say developed, I cre I made an EM pump and I used it for quite some time, but I found that it wasn't big enough. Um, and I found that a lot of my equipment was, uh, I would get some false readings with it. So, you know, I should have spent some time and finagled it a little bit more. Um, but I did notice that the change in my psychic abilities, not necessarily I don't want to say they, they got worse or they weren't as effective, but I found that it was like static trying to get it, the, the phone call or the connection wasn't as great because okay. of that. Now, just for a reference, if people are experiencing um, some issues with electromagnetic fields through those pumps, shugite or tourmaline is very good at absorbing that so that it's not necessarily going to cause you headaches or feeling sick or that kind of paranoia feeling. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, and I, I sometimes wear, I have a little shoot, shoot, no, shungite um, medallion I'll wear sometimes. It sort of helps check that. While we have it, uh, our, our family that's often really great um, supporters of ours, the Bird family, they're from Salt Lake City. And I want her to look at Dave in the picture. And up on the wall, I guess that's the Dave's right. That's the clock that you made and sent me. So I just want to point that clock out for the bird family. And I thank him for, for that. They sent me a little, a clock and it's got crystals and minerals. At oh, cool. Level. So yeah, that was, that was a nice little gift. So that is here at the Hoover house in the oh, office. God. So I wanted to thank the bird yeah, family. And I think they're trying to come in for the bash in August. So we're hopeful to You've see got them all there. Three, six and nine, but all the other numbers are different, uh, either crystals or minerals. Yeah. Right on. Thanks, man. Yeah. And then thanks to you, we've got some wonderful tourmaline here that you had sent me. Oh, neat. Yes, tourmaline and fluorite. Yes. That's really lovely, that it's clock. Amazing stuff. I know. I, I saw I'm so envious. You've got that. Oh, my gosh. And uh, I have. Uh, I just got them in, and they're fantastic. I'm going to be sending you one. Uh, I love the properties of blue topaz, and I got a lovely. Yes. I got a lovely. It's actually a gemstone quality. I think it's about a one and a half carat 
blue topaz. I got four. They're the pear cuts. They're beautiful. Yeah. So I'm going to send you one as a gift. Oh, okay. So, Thank uh, you. Uh, hey, 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 I'm, hey, I'm hey, sure hey, you're hey, aware of the property of the blue topaz. Well, well, hold it. Hold <laughs> it. <laughs> hey, you don't, don't like rocks. You're topaz. not a rock collector, are you? You're not a rock collector. You're in a cat and a half blue topaz. Where <laughs> the hell's mine at? <laughs> Uh, Richard, I'm telling you, yeah. we're not a rock cam. We can smell each other. <laughs> yeah, when you guys come right. into town and see, Jim has at, at, at the house has curio cabinets. They've got to be seven and a half foot tall, and just he's got two of them, and just completely filled with different crystals, and minerals. Yeah. He's actually got a damn megalodon <laughs> Megal 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 tooth in there and everything. Dave, I, I got care. a problem. I'm, I'm with you, topaz. Jim. I'm hearing Karen and a half blue topaz not coming my way. <laughs> That's what I hear. Hey, I'll, I'll send you some tourmaline, Richard. You'll be fine. Oh, thanks. I'll, yeah. I'll be on the lookout <laughs> hey. for another great deal. <laughs> and you'll be you guys will be able to see my my protection stone that Jim has just for me because for the longest time, um, before we I guess grew up so to speak, and, and knew how to come at spirit with a respectful but stern uh, approach. Uh, it was our, uh, at least it was my procedure to basically go into a location and say, look, don't mess with the old guy. Don't mess with the young psychic. If you're going to physically do anything, anybody do it to me. And I would take a beating, like physically take a beating. So I didn't know any better back then, you know. How'd that work out for you, Dave? <laughs> oh, not well at all. No, well. He was like George the Animal Steel wrestler, you know, to throw him to the spirits. So yeah. I'm not too sure how many people remember. Tap George out, the tap Animal out. Steel. Oh yeah. So Jim bought a, a piece of jet for me, and it's about that big, <laughs> and it's about that. There we go. About that thick width so i'm gonna drill a hole through it and put a big old chain on it and i'll be like the flavor flavor of the paranormal community boy. with this giant black and jet around me <laughs> yeah, what all the we good Dude, enough boy. <laughs> oh, that's dave. yes flavor dave <laughs> flavor dave that's a flavor dave uh, one thing i want to have a question yeah i see that how do you he's know it's so doing much this? better he really has. I mean, he's much more careful now. I guess he's had his head rammed into pipes and, and attacked enough times. And uh. Yeah, I'm too old for all that stuff. Anymore. You know what? We've, we've grown up. You know, everybody starts somewhere, and there's nothing wrong with that. So be, be proud of that. The fact that you, you, you know, we've all, think of it as children. We all, you know, skinned our knees at one point, and now we mm -hmm. realize it's not kind of how we want to do it. Um, To answer that question about stones, you know, um. I, when I pick up a stone, um, if it burns my hand or it feels hot or I get an icky feeling, I immediately put it back. It hasn't chosen me. I don't choose the stone. The, cho mm. the stone chooses me. Um, and so it's really important uh, to pick up the stone, to feel it. How does it feel to you? And you're going to know. It's, it's just kind of a gut feeling that you know which one you want to work with. Uh, it's especially powerful if it's a gift. So if somebody's giving you a gift, you're going to feel that, you know, feel um, obviously if it burns you put it put it down but for the most part it's going to be you know it, it's going to aid you now in terms of picking the right stone or what kind of stone for the purpose you want it for it's really good to pick up a book uh, oh, I, have, I have one right here haha <laughs> Right here, here's a really good book I referenced, The Pocket Book of Stones, okay? I've got a bunch of different books, but this is something that's small and easy to kind of look at, um, and it's got references to millions of different kind of minerals that you can use, uh, and they all have different um, principles, they all have different uh, vibrational frequencies, some of the, are used for cleansing, some are for healing, so really it's why you want it uh, is, is kind of what you want to ask first. Yeah. yeah. If anyone has questions about stones, get a hold of Kitty. <laughs> Seriously. I'm a rock hounder. I go out and I rock hound. I collect stones. I mean, you can I... look behind her. You can tell she operates oh, with stones. My whole basement is – my, my uh, husband says I have you know a problem. What I... <laughs> my basement's covered. My landings are covered. My living room's covered. My Like, I this is just – that's just there. Like, I have stones everywhere. 
Richard, I'll have I'll, I'll tell you what I'll have to get Richard. I'm a big advocate of Super 7 for re-energizing and, and, and stuff. I'm going to send you a Super 7. Try holding that in your hand. See if that doesn't warm, not burn, but warm and just mm -hmm. really re-energize. I tell you, I've, I've uh, given a number where I got a really um, good. I understand the mind where they get those now has been flooded. So there's okay. a lot of stuff on the market that they're pushing a super seven that really isn't. It's only got five of the seven, but I'll get, I'll get you a, I'll send Richard a real super seven that should provide nice energy for it. I'd appreciate that, Jim. Thank you. See, see if that works. It's a good it's, start. It's, it's a great <laughs> start. It's not a one and a half pair of topaz, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> <It'll, it'll... laughs> no, I appreciate that very much. I'm just playing with you. <laughs> You know that she looked a lot better with the topaz than I would anyway. So you know, yeah. <laughs> you look better with the bag of dirt than me having a topaz. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, okay. thank you. I'll so tell Kate, you later, Richard. <laughs> Kate and I sent a few stones back and forth, so we've 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 um, discussed. That's why I knew she is a rock hound and stuff. Oh, so. oh yes, yeah. And and they oh, really they they've helped me so much. I mean, um, sometimes. Uh, some sometimes um, it's really helped for me at least. It's helped reveal whether I have something trying to attach to me, or or something like that. So they they've been good. We we had a really neat thing happened again this past uh, weekend. So there was a young man here who was staying, and I didn't know this, but during the day he had gone to some of the cemeteries in the area, and I believe they were it was one of the civil war cemeteries and I, it wasn't an attachment, but he had a spirit that followed him out of the cemetery. And so that night we're doing table tipping and the spirit comes through for him. Naaman wants to present. And every time it would come forward to present, it would get blocked. And it was really weird. We were like, <laughs> we were, it was strong energy and then it was like blocked and the table's just sort of rocking and shivering around. And it's happened several times. And finally it came out. And again, I don't know that it was necessarily anything negative or whatever, but the priorities of the spirits in this house, they control things. They would not let that spirit come out. And it was Ira had sent his daughter down. She identified herself, Eleanor, and she had been sent down by her dad to block that spirit. And twice mm -hmm. during the night, that spirit kept trying to present. And twice it was blocked and was not allowed to present. And have, have you guys heard of that before? Where, oh, absolutely. In, in, okay. Well, you've heard of that. Sure. It's like a hierarchy. Yeah. yeah there's, there's a hierarchy pecking order. Here. Yeah. There's, there's a hierarchy the, here. And um, Ira is at the very top of the food chain. And... Since he's the original builder and owner, if he doesn't like your energy, whether you're male <laughs> malevolent or, or not, if he doesn't like you, you've got to go. Um, we had a situation where a friend of ours bought a table that had a spirit attachment to it and brought it in. We were going to try tipping it with it, and it would not move, not, not even mm -hmm. the slightest vibration, nothing. And so we switched to our other table, and Ira came out and basically said, I don't want that thing in my house. Get it out. And we we're okay. Well, we'll just put it outside. No, I don't want it on my property. And we basically had to salt this table, and he and the, our friend had to give it to somebody else because he couldn't have it here. And I knew we, he yeah. knew his wife wouldn't let him have it at home. But yeah, I was. It's it's very strange. I've never seen it before. I tell you the, the and I mentioned a lot. I know, but I love the place. The right hotel. I've been there now almost forty times. Um, there is the the hierarchy. Kate, Kate Wright, who is the final Wright family member to own the hotel, she is fully in charge. <laughs> we do a human pendulum, and she will literally block spirits from engaging in the human pendulum with us. She will. If she does and the problem with it is, is the building is right next door to a portal. And, you know, they don't want us to close the portal because, you know, the place is now revered as a on a location, you know, why send everybody away, you know, but uh, she's very much in charge and she will tell you point blank, 
you know, he's going to go, she's going to go, he's okay. I mean, she's very much in charge. Mm. And I had that happen because, again, we do a human pendulum during my tours where we use people instead of a pendulum. And, you know, and it's a it's an incredible communicative tool would that you, we use. Would you explain that, that, Richard? I'm not really yeah. familiar with that. The way that we do it is, is you know, again, very similar to, to a pendulum that people to hold it still and rock and roll back and forth. We use people. We put a person at each point of the compass, north, south, okay. east, west, and we put one in the middle. The one in the middle, typically, I will pick on a skeptic because skeptics don't have a clue about how how powerful the paranormal can be. So what we will do is I will ask them to kind of find a focal point in the wall, breathe in, breathe out really deep, shake it off, get ready to go. Then I will engage spirit to come and manipulate them physically for the answers of yes and no. And then when we're done, I will break that communication with the person in the pendulum and I will pull them out. Now, I've had times where I've had people literally come off their feet mm. for an answer. And it's and it's it's funny to watch a skeptic's face go, hmm, yeah, woo. Yeah. <laughs> How's that feeling? Yeah, where do you feel that coming from? The lifting motion. I don't know. Okay. Wow. And what's funny is it's not funny, it's interesting to me. It's very intriguing. Women are very emotional thinkers to a point. Um, I've never had a woman in that circle except for one that didn't start bawling her eyes out before it was over. It made now, that a serious connection with the spirit that is manipulating them. Now, do you direct? Are you outside of this circle directing the yes, flow? Yes, I am directing the questioning. Gotcha. Um, okay. I have another person who confirms the motion with me. Most of the time, though, like I said, the motion is pretty obvious was yes and no. Now, they do have an opportunity to go and say if yes and no was forward and backward, Sometimes they can go to the side and go backward. Well, that just means they really weren't sure what you're asking, most likely. So rephrase the question again. Maybe they'll give them a chance to give you a clear an answer. And I do, they do want to give you a clear an answer. But to me, it is probably one of the most interesting it, it, you know, engagements you could have with spirit, as far as I'm concerned. Wow. No, I, see, that's why I love that's why I love you guys. Yes. I mean, such such great ideas and concepts. We we definitely we, uh, have Definitely got to try it here. <laughs> We've gone as far as actually putting headphones on somebody with music so that they can't hear our questions. And we ask them to close their eyes and we will ask the questions and see which way, you know, we'll ask intelligent questions in terms of, you know, are you a female? Are you a male? And we'll, and to try to get the rapport of what's yes and no and, you know, back in front. And then we'll start asking some really cool questions um, and, you know, try to have them not look at us and, and stand behind and, we'll get those answers, you know, without them even knowing it. So like Richard said, it's that skepticism where they don't know what to expect. Yeah. Wow. Now that's, we've, we've done, you know, with the headphones before and asking questions, mm -hmm. somebody sitting in sort of an isolation, but I've never, never done it within a, a, a compass circle and all that. That, that sounds amazing. Well, I will yeah. tell you the one other step you can take. It's another step up. It's the Gonsfeld method. That's full field. I mean, you're sitting in a chair, red light in your face, goggles on your eyes, where you can't see a headphone playing a white noise file. And holy crap. The only one time I ever did that, I sat in there and I'm like, oh, yeah, this ought to be interesting. Put it on, put it in. First level of white noise, because there's three different increasing levels of white noise. First part of the white noise wasn't wasn't bad. I can kind of sense the motion. I can feel, see spirit in my third, you know, in my mind's eye, I can see spirit and it was, it was, you know, it was fun. And when he kicked it to the second level of white noise, holy crap, it's like somebody turned on switches in the entire building. I could see everything. Mm. I could tell you what the team was doing on the third floor, and I didn't know what they were doing on the third floor. But I can tell you to get it out, get Dave away from the door. There's somebody in the doorway that wants to hurt him. I mean, it's just really how funny that next level. And it's, it's intimidating. It intimidated me, and I'm not an easy guy to intimidate. It intimidated yeah. me. I wanted to I, I did uh, pull it out. So I that, did a sensory deprivation experiment at uh, the Keeley Mansion in Uniontown, Pennsylvania, and I have no abilities to speak of, but uh, after about, I want to say maybe 10, 12 minutes, I heard something as plainly as I'm talking to you in my right ear, and what it said was not very nice, yeah. and uh, I had to take everything off. 
and immediately I was, I mean, it felt like I was sitting in a sauna. It was so hot and I felt so dehydrated that I chugged like two bottles of water and still needed help to get down the stairs. I mean, it was very uh, intense, very intense. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if we got just a sec, we need to uh, go ahead and go to our commercial break and we'll sure. be back in just a few more minutes with uh, Katie and Richard. Thanks, you guys, and everybody will be right back. WLFE Digital Network is now on digital television. If you're into ghosts, Bigfoot, UFOs, and the creepy, then WLFE has a TV channel for you, Paranormal View. Watch all of your favorite WLFE video talk shows on one channel. Shows like Paratalk Radio, Step Into the Paranormal, Skeptical Help Bar, The Creepy Parlor, and more. Looking for something else? Do you support the LGBTQ plus community? WLFE has brought all of their LGBTQ shows like Inside the Drag Closet, Everything Yet Nothing, Across the Pond, and Rainbow Soul all into one place. A new TV channel called LGBTQ Friends. The third channel is a variety unlimited. Here you'll find a wide variety of talk shows you know and love. Like Just Cindy, Card Pulls and Coffee, Real Talk with Nam, The Bipolar DM, Meet the Author, and Movie Review 5. The best part of watching these shows is that they're all available to watch at one location, one website, wlfe-db.com. You are listening to WLFE-DBRadio.com, where our shows are your shows. Listen to the WLFE-DB podcast, available on Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Check out shows like Paratalk Radio, Inside the Drag Closet, and Step into the Paranormal. Now, on to your favorite podcast app. This is Dominic Santacero with Real Talk with Dom. You are listening to WLFE-DBRadio.com, where our shows are your shows. Hey, guys and dolls. This is Casey DeVille, the better half of DeVille, Inc., Baltimore, Maryland. If you're ever in Baltimore, stop in and see me and Tony in Invisible Brie, 5920 Eastern Avenue, Baltimore, Maryland, 21224. Give us a call if you're in the area, 410 Four zero zero nine six four one, or look us up on the web at thebilling.com. Debilling, where we specialize in you. Oh yeah. Life just got sweeter now that WLFE DB has merchandise. Show your support by purchasing your t-shirts for WLFE, Paratalk Radio, Inside the Drag Closet, and more. But it doesn't stop there. T-shirts, coffee mugs, tanks, buttons, cloth bags, and more. Go to WLFE-DB.com. On the top bar, click on the Merchandise tab, and bam. There you go. You got merch. Support the shows. WLFE-DB.com. You're listening to WLFE DB Radio. Now back to our program. All right. All right, Dave. Dave's, Dave's preparing a beverage. So he, he's down here at the bar area with me. So he'll be going back. Oh, at the bar. The yeah. <laughs> it's, it's no good, bar. It's, we don't have a, They took all the liquor out when we bought the house. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, between the gemstones and the liquor, I'm not getting Jack over here. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> the food. But you talk about uh, drinks and you got to come hell? visit us, Richard. You come visit us, we'll put you up in one of the suites. We have the one, uh, the one suite actually has a jacuzzi in the bathroom. So oh. you, we'll give you the, we'll give you court we'll So uh, yeah. yeah. With, with things are doing well. We actually um, no investigations this weekend. We're but we are booked. Um, we're getting a lot of B two B and Air B two B and uh, uh, Booking dot com. Um, I'm actually going up tomorrow 
to visit a good friend of mine who's actually watching our show tonight. And uh, her husband, you, you're familiar with Holly. I, I yeah. know you are, Katie, because you've given her some insight. And so we're my wife and I are going up to visit with her and her husband and spend the weekend. And then next week, uh, we actually have um, uh, there's a paranormal teams come in. And I think the end, we, we try to have a bunch of variety here. End of the month, there's a WWE wrestler. Gene, what is it? Sinitsky? Gene Sinitsky? Uh, yes. Gene I know Gene Sinitsky. Okay. Well, Gene's coming in. He's big into paranormal. Yeah. So he's actually done a wrestling movie. So uh, about three blocks up Main Street, where we're on, uh, they're debuting his wrestling movie. And for five bucks, you get the movie, popcorn, and a drink. And then he'll, this is booked up. And then Saturday, he's doing an investigation here. So he's sort of like the oh, guest yeah. investigator. So, so yeah, it's, it's, it, it's pretty neat. We're getting a lot of very interesting uh, different uh, avenues going forth. And, and I might actually console. We've, we've had a lot of the bigger names looking at coming in the house and, I, I just I worry a lot because some of them don't present the way you know what I'm saying. I have concerns. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so I I, I don't know. You know, I mean, it's I guess everything. It's a two-edged sword. It's it's good in one sense, but as long as they're willing, you know, you, we it, they ab absolutely have to be respectful of spirit because without yeah. that, we we just have another haunted location. <laughs> You know. Mm -hmm. well, I know so, that we're having, um, we're having Shane Pittman on tomorrow night. Um, Sunday. 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 Sunday night. Sunday night. Sunday. 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 Sorry, yeah, Sunday night. <laughs> um, got a little ahead of myself. And uh, you know, he's always looking for a place with his other group called the Searchers. He's always looking for a place to go. So I'll bring it up. He's and he's somebody that I would trust in the building. I oh, understand that's, that's exactly good to know. Know. Yeah. I understand exactly how you feel. Um, I, I have to vet a lot of the teams that come in to do tours and private investigations in the buildings that I manage. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm not an easy guy to get garbage through, and I will, I will pick up on it in a minute. So yeah, I mean these places are are designed to be respected, and they're designed to be, uh, you know, they're going to be preserved in the right way, but they deserve to be respected, and so do the spirits in the building. And sometimes, as you know, we can get yahoos. Oh, yeah. Just, you know, they, oh, it's a good time. I've seen it on TV. I can do it, too. You really don't need to, dude. You just don't need to. Um, and I'm the best for the teams out of the building giving them a refund. Nope. Yeah. Just, just go on your way. Nope. Yeah. Nope. And then luckily, that's why, like I said, Pam and Steve, they're very experienced in this. And, and thank God for them. I, I wouldn't have entered into this without their expertise because um I, I i guess i'm a little too much the purist and i mean you've got flavor dave there yeah that's <laughs> tell him to get his good dave. old stick <laughs> flavor dave. dave will rectify the situation <laughs> but but you both know you have open invitations here richard if that you, you just you. let me know we'll book your spot out you you really enjoy it i'd love i'd really just love the see both of you. I would, you know, I would love the opportunity to come up there to see you guys investigate that place when she's able to. Because her and I have never actually physically met. Wow. You're kidding. Yeah, no, I didn't know that. Never. We've never met. Oh, we gotta make we gotta make that happen. Yeah, I gotta that's what I want to do. If you're able if she's able to get away and the walls come tumbling down and she can get out, that's what we'll do. And she's ready if she's able to come and see the building and investigate it. I'll come with her, and we'll just knock it out of the park. Oh, my God, Kate. So the pressure's on you. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. No pressure. That would be oh, phenomenal. And like I said, bring, down. <laughs> bring, bring, <laughs> you know, and I listen, bring your family. We'll, we'll make, we'll make space for them. I mean, we've got, we have, well, actually, we have five rooms. Three of them are suites, but we actually even put a, uh, my wife just got a futon for the office, so we can squeeze the six up there. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Sounds good to me. 
Yeah, Sounds I, good I, to me. I would. I would love to get up there and have a place. But I oh, really that would, really oh my gosh, we got to really make that happen. I, I got. You to- know what's gonna happen, right? You're gonna be like, all right, Katie, it's time to go. <laughs> like, oh, please, can I just stay one more night? No, no, you need to can go. I have <laughs> wow. No, I, 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 I really didn't know that that you guys yeah. hadn't. Uh, Wow. No. And I mean, and, honestly, she's as close to me as any family member I've ever had. Actually, with my family, she's closer. Um, so saying. But I mean, she truly is. She's kind of like my, she's kind of like a sister to me. And, you know, yeah. and that's kind of, you know, kind of how we see it with each other. And, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, we don't, we don't actually, we've never argued. I don't never. think so. Yet. Well, no, just yeah. Because <laughs> I'm always right. Funny. I, I get to hear it to Hoover House and you scheme with each other. <laughs> I no, I just, uh, like so I said, funny because you, you the way you work off of each other is really oh, good. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. great chemistry. It really is. And I, Thank you. I, I, I would just be enthralled with the way spirit would react to that. I mean, we, we might have these tables on the ceiling. I don't know. Hey, good I mean, Joanne asked earlier, Joanne Stewart's one of our fans, and she asked earlier if we were any any experience with the table. I want to address that so that way she doesn't think we forgot her. Um, yeah, you know, um, I've done a little bit of table tipping work, not a lot. It's not normally in my wheelhouse. Everything else is, but. Yeah. Um, what about you, Katie? Have you done table tipping? I've experimented with it twice. Um, not recently, uh, when I was younger. And I don't, I'll be honest with you, I didn't know enough about it. This is something that I would certainly want to yeah. learn from you guys on the on the art of it, because I really believe that there has to be kind of a method to the madness. So, no. you know, I have. Yeah. No, I wouldn't say I'm experienced in it at all. I have experimented with it, but I don't know as though it's been successful. Well, there we'll was have a, to do that when we come um, up. When, when, we'll have to do that when we come over. Yeah, yeah. The first time... Um, we did it. Uh, Pam and Steve were at a different location than here, um, and we were over there with them. And they told us about it. And um, they had uh, learned of table tipping and been taught how to do it from a woman named Bobby Robinson, who is uh, an educator up in Lilydale. Okay. And taught them how to Lilydale. do it. And she's, if I'm not mistaken, Jim, she's actually coming down here and doing yeah, a, she, a special table tipping thing here yep. at the house. Oh, we're doing yeah. Yeah. But, um, the higher education. <laughs> yeah, she had cool. taught them, and then they showed us. And if you go on our uh, YouTube and on our website, I have a video of that first time we did it. And our, our psychic medium from our team, Haley, was with us. Um, and, you know, I've always been skeptical um to an extent um it took jim and i were probably in the field for 10 years before i met um the fourth member of our team janet jones who was very gifted um and to that point i didn't buy any of them i thought that's too easy to fake there's cold readers all this stuff and then she convinced me of people with abilities so when we went over there the first time to this other location and did uh, this table tipping, I was so amazed that, and you'll see in this video that I did, it's it's like a little short movie almost. I'm lifting the table up, I'm checking, I'm downstairs looking up in a joystick if there's magnets, there's gotta be some contraption that's making this table move the way it was. This table, and Steve had told us right before we started several times, Jim, when this thing gets moving, you have to stand up and go with it. You can't sit in the chair. You won't. You can't keep up with it. So what happens? This table starts moving, and there's Jim trying to scoot his chair along with it, and, <laughs> it's, uh, 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 and the table stops. And we're like, "Well, what happened?" We're like, "Jim, you have to stand up." He stood up the minute he got upright and got his base. Wow, this thing took off again. So it waited for him. I couldn't believe it. I, I was, I was like, That's "There's amazing. no way somebody's doing something." Ooh, I when I checked everything I could think of from a mechanical engineer's point of view to see what was causing this, and I couldn't, I couldn't come up with anything. Wow! Wow! Holy! Well, I, think, wow. I think when we get up there and we get to doing that, we gotta do some table tipping. We gotta do a little human pendulum. Yeah! Oh yeah! Human and pendulum. Oh yeah! 
Oh and, yeah. And we were also you're we the bait bomb. flavor, Dave. <laughs> Yeah, I get well, a little bit too big. Maybe we can just put my daughters. They're smaller. Right. I moved a guy. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Fear moved a guy in the building I was in one time doing that. That dude had to be six eight, six nine, go three fifty, three seventy five, and it literally picked him up off the ground on his heels. Oh he was bigger God. than me. So hey, yeah. I'm, I'm down to try everything at least once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, be careful what you wish for. Yeah, and if you like it, you'll do it again. Um, Absolutely. It's kind of how that works. That's why I have three kids. <laughs> it, it really oh, I got him. I got him. <laughs> it really is it. a wonder, though, how uh, how powerful spirit can be. I mean, uh, yeah. just like you said, a, a man of that size to try to think of the energy it takes to even lift that a, a little ways. Um well, what it is, honestly, too, is what it is with that human pendulum that, that makes that ability easier for the spirit is that you're in a state of trance almost. You're staring at this object on a wall in front of you, so your mind's not into putting on the brakes as much as it would be if you weren't concentrating. Because the natural body's reaction on a push or a shove or a movement is to stop it because you're afraid you're going to fall forward or afraid you're going to fall backward. Um, that's why we always put a person within shoulder reach, you know, bent, bent elbows on their shoulders and bent elbows on the front of their shoulders so that they know they can comfortably release themselves. But, boy, when they do, mm. it's fun. Absolutely. I'll give that a try. You know, yeah, I, it doesn't work. Uh, I've had a concussion before. We're not going to damage anything up here. <laughs> a question just came to me. I uh, sort of go in. Uh, have, have either of you been to a location before where – the negativity in the energy or what you were picking up on is so dark or whatever that you would really hesitate going back. Like, I guess questioning what's to be learned or if you'd be exposing yourself, uh, even, even with your skills and abilities, if you'd be, you know what I mean, trying to have to, Ward off the negative energy in yes. that, where it's like the risk isn't worth whatever you might find out. Absolutely. Yeah. There was a scenario where I was working with someone who uh, was possessed. And um, when that occurs, when, when demonic possession occurs, and it's very rare, you know, it's not what television portrays, but when it does occur, um, you know, the person doesn't acknowledge it happens. That you know, That's part of the possession. They, they're they like, what are you talking about? No, it doesn't happen. And uh, this family had tried to have an exorcism done uh, before unsuccessful. And so they approached me and said, I don't know what to do. And I said, you need to get this woman away from... Uh, something dangerous, like, you know, something that could, she, she could potentially hurt somebody. I said, like, you need to, this is way above my pay grade. We need to get, bring bigger people in, but you have to be willing to do as I ask and, and kind of take this seriously. This isn't kind of, you know, she's got a cold. This is, there's something going on. They didn't take me seriously. And that night she actually stabbed her son. Ooh. And, and so she, she took, she took a knife from, uh, she, she lived with him and his wife and it was an elderly lady. You know, this was somebody who was, uh, you know, there no history of mental health, uh, you know, was a solid worker, had a good job, was fully retired. You know, it, it was somebody who um, was a very successful person, in, you know, in society. Um, and it all it all started when she took a trip to through a cruise to um, parts of South America or, or down in that area. And when she went to, do uh, you know, when you go to port or you go on, you know, when you dock for a day or two, she uh, ended up picking something up and bringing it back with her. And, and uh, the Padre on the ship recognized it and tried to save her and she, he couldn't get rid of it. And so all of the stories coming out and after the, the man was stopped. And so I got, I got contact about a week later after all of this, I had warned them what was going to happen. Um, when he got back from the hospital, he said, like, all he started to tell me everything that was going on. You have to understand a lot of these people, number one, will approach me skeptic with skepticism because obviously, you know, they, 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 they're, they don't know if I'm real. And number two, they don't want me to think they're crazy, right? So he, he was very apprehensive as to what he was telling me. He didn't give me the full story. And so after he got out of the hospital, uh, she ended up 
having to be restrained and and uh they ended up being able to and get an exorcism done but it was a very dangerous situation that is not something i wanted to walk back into right understandably yeah. mm -hmm. well I'm, I'm glad you brought that up um i wanted to uh relay a story of something that happened with myself and katie you may be familiar with it i'm not, I'm not sure if jim had told you about this or not but i definitely want to get you guys input on it um i've talked to several of the medium obviously the first two were the ones on our team and got their impressions of what it was we were in this location it was called the keely mansion up in uniontown pennsylvania and it is a beautiful place very ripe with spirit uh very ripe with positive energy except for this one area of the basement um and at one point <clears throat> now throughout the evening we had done two or three different investigation sessions down in the basement um one of which i got shoved but, you know, I didn't think much of it. Uh, so here come around 2, 2, 2 30 in the morning. We're in the main parlor on the main level, and we're doing a phasma box session. And I'm wide-eyed, and I'm engaged, and we're asking questions, and everything's fine. And all of a sudden, just kind of out of nowhere, I just started to, to go. I mean, I just felt like I was just going to fall asleep right then and there. So I took one of my large monsters that I dr used to drink really tall ones and i chugged the whole thing and that didn't help so i asked jim if he would break off the the session and i went outside and i smoked a couple cigarettes and and two of the women that were there came out with me and uh after, at that point i felt fine i'm outside i'm good I had a couple cigarettes and i said look i'm feeling fine now let me go use the restroom and i'll meet you guys back in the we'll start up again so i went excuse me i went to the restroom and i used the restroom and i remember flushing and I remember washing my hands. The next memory I have, I'm in the basement and our team member Haley is standing right next to me, screaming my name in my ear. And a friend of ours, Nikki, is standing in front of me just doing this. And that combination, I guess, snapped me out of whatever it was. And I, I kind of jumped and I'm like, what, the, what, are you, what are you two doing? You scared the hell out of me. They said, well, what are you doing? We've been looking for you for 45 minutes. We found you down here in the basement staring at that room where you got shoved. I have, between the washing of the hands and that moment, I have no memory whatsoever. So I've lost 45 minutes of time now. So I had on the shelf behind me, I had one of our SoloX cameras, which um, records audio and video in full spectrum at 1080p. And it has a 160 degree angle in the camera. I said, you know what? Let me pull the chip out of that camera and put it in the laptop and see what happened. So I pulled the chip out. The chip had over a gigabyte of space still left on it, but it had stopped itself recording at midnight. And the oddest part of it was, you know, when you've set a camera somewhere and you hit record and you walk away, it records you at minimum walking away. Nothing. The only clips that we had on that camera was of, just that doorway to that room in full spectrum, nobody down there. Not, it didn't record, it, it recorded the times that we were down there investigating, but not of any of us actually there. And it didn't even have me walking away from it as I hit record and put it in place. I, even if I had the wherewithal and the capabilities to do that, I don't know what software you could, I, I don't know how to, you could edit that out i have no memory of that i don't know what the hell it was um i've been told that it was i was influenced uh which is kind of like um as you you probably already know um but for the people watching influence is, is kind of like um you're not possessed but you're also not in control of what you're doing at the same time Hitchhikers. You know, yeah, yeah so I, I would just like to get your guys opinion on that I, I to this day i still have no memory of that 45 minutes in my opinion, you were jumped, um, and then they have a lot of influence over you. Then it is not an it is not possession. It is just an opportunity to control you, and it did that. The thing I will tell you is be careful. In my in my experience, once it happens, it's liable to happen again. And it's, but and I it's think not for anything yeah. other than I'm sorry, Kitty, not didn't mean to jump on you, but it's not for anything other than and and just forgive the expression. 
but it's not for anything other than at that point you were the weakest link somewhere. Somewhere right. your mind wasn't right, you're, yep. you're somewhere else, you were too open. It, it could be because you actually do have abilities. You do. Um, so the people with abilities can read other people with abilities. Trust me, you, you've got abilities. You just not sure how to operate them yet. But anyway, the problem with that is, is you, you're either most likely you were just too open. Okay. And if you're too open and you don't know how to kind of put a block around you a little bit, it's going to happen again. Because okay. it's kind of like, you know, getting poison oak. Once you have it, you're really susceptible to getting it again. Kind of like so, heat stroke. Yeah, so it's kind of, you know, there was like a chink in your armor somewhere that allowed that person, that well, that entity to be able to jump you. There was a chink in the armor somewhere. So did, you need to try to find a way to protect yourself. I think, too, it's an invitation. Number one, you have a strong personality, right? So you're not going to let people take advantage of you. So you walk in with armor on already. And it's and it's um, it's a, a bully behavior, in other words, like, oh, you think you're strong, do you? Oh, oh yeah, you think you're strong? I had an entity one time. Uh, that that was being quite rude during a, a gallery reading. I was doing a, a group session, and it was kicking my chair as I'm reading. It was pushing and shoving, and I just said, "Would you cut it out? Like I'm busy." But because I disrespected him, he ended up taking my cell phone and throwing it halfway across my backyard. And right. I didn't witness it being thrown. I didn't. I didn't witness any of this stuff. But that's where I found it two hours later. And I hadn't even walked there. I was the only person home. I was the only, like. There's not a physical way possible that could have happened. And right. so I think sometimes not only do they manipulate physical objects, but they can manipulate space and time. You know, we do quantum leaps quite often, and we don't realize it going into different parallel universes and dimensions. And so who knows where you went? You have no recollection of that. I would be very interested to do a hypnosis session with you because I think your subconscious would be open enough to tell you where you went and what happened during that, that thing. You may not have it on, on a video uh, recollection, but you have it in your memory. And, mm -hmm. and I think you would probably get a, even a better picture or, or um, mind frame of what this entity looked like. And I think he was bullying you. And, he, and because you came into that location and you invited yourself in, invited that open communication, that door to investigate, that was his way in. You know, people say to me all the time, well, I won't use a Ouija board because, you know, it's you're inviting it in, but you'll do other things. It's an invitation. This woman that had this step in, this possession off of a ship, by going into that location, walking in and, and, uh, and grabbing the objects and holding them, she was inviting herself to that location. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's how it came in. So it's not always a conscious reaction. It could be subconscious. And yeah. the fact of the matter is the last thing that you did was you washed your hands. That's a, that's a natural, a, a natural element that can be used as an invitation. Not only is it a cleansing, but it's also used uh, for, uh, you know, for entering as well. Yeah. And see, I was I was even open to the possibility that uh, perhaps there was uh, otherworldly forms involved. You know, as, mm -hmm. as far Absolutely. as uh, alien life forms. You know? I'm not saying that there was, but with no with no quote unquote memory of that time, yep. you know, that's not uncommon for people who have had abductions is to not have memory of the time they were gone. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Would you ever be open to doing a, uh, a hypnosis? Have you ever have you been hypnotized in the past? I have not. Um, I was actually thinking of possibly getting that done to quit smoking. Yep. Well, hit two um, birds with one stone there. <laughs> you know, find out what happened and quit smoking. <laughs> yeah. We can get her done. We can get her dead. He uh, actually. He, uh, many, many years ago, we were on the field at Gettysburg and, and he wasn't smoking. And um, while we were there, we were on the uh, triangular field and that, there was a long period of time. And that was one of the more active areas of Gettysburg. They've done some deforestation to bring it more into the sight lines of 1863. And it really has upset the spirits. Uh, so that the it's changed. It's not the hot spot it used to be, but at the time it was. And we were there, and we actually had met up with a group from outside of um, uh, Philadelphia area. And while there, he he's going like, 
I'm ready for the next step. Well, you never make statements like that to spirit. And they gave him the next step. And the next step was to knock him on his ass. And they, some spirit uh, came up and rolled on his face. Went, and I'm, I'm just maybe like six feet from him. And I see him go flying through the air onto his back. And I run over to him, check if he's okay. And his eyeballs, is, you know, all white. But right before that, literally a minute or two before that episode, we got a full apparition of a military, of a union yeah. officer with a... With oh, a I'd love to thing. see that picture. And, uh, and, and anyhow, that, that's the instance where years later, Janet's visiting Gettysburg with us. And we're back in that area. And she turns around. She, don't know, she knows nothing about this. She turns around, looks at Dave and says, he wasn't trying to hurt you. That he was pushing you to the ground to save you. Like he saw Dave as one of his men and the bullets are flying overhead. So he's shoving him down. Yeah. And that's when Dave started believing in psychic mediums. <laughs> yep. but it was after that episode that he started smoking again. <laughs> okay. Now I will say in my defense, the very first question I asked him when he ran over to me was, did you get that? And he said, no, my camera wasn't on. My recorder wasn't on. And that's when I said, okay, Keystone State rule number one. The minute you get out of your vehicle, you turn your damn camera on. Because that would have been awesome to get that. Yeah, that it was is rule on the one. fly recording. All paranormal is on the fly recording. Yeah. Yes. But you, you know, that's a great statement, uh, Dave. And the fact that, you know, and Jimmy had said he wasn't trying to hurt him. He was trying to protect him. Unfortunately, I think TV has sensationalized any events like that being negative or evil. And, yeah. and, you know, most of the time that's not the case. We did an investigation a few years back with a gentleman uh, who had passed away and they, they were having severe activity in their home. And uh, when I got to, I did a walkthrough and I try not to know anything. I try to go in blind. I leave it for my investigators to, uh, to find out the information, right? Because I want to get a feel. So I'm walking and doing the walkthrough through the home and I get to one particular area and I saw a man standing there and I got a very, very good description, very vivid. And when I turned to walk away, I all of a sudden felt, Ooh. you know, like a cut across my neck and I was like, whoa. And I said, you need to back off. Like you need to stop. And I was upset and I thought, why does he want to hurt me? I, I'm not threatening. I didn't, I wasn't disrespectful. Why would he want that? And it was at that moment that my guide kind of said, no, stupid. He's trying to tell you how he died. Nobody had told me anything, but unfortunately this gentleman yeah. was a victim of a murder and he had his throat slit. Oh. And so even though he was giving me the pain, he was trying desperately to show me that he w was cut. And unfortunately, sometimes when traumatic experiences like that happen in life, in death, it affects him just the same. So he felt in death he couldn't talk because his throat was slit. And it was through that conversation that I was able to tell him, no, you can. You can have these conversations and you don't need your mouth to speak anymore. We can send messages back and forth that it was at, at ease. But not knowing that, not having, you know, um, knowing, I guess, my abilities or being used to my abilities, that's pretty intimidating, right? And yeah, yeah. If, if that psychic hadn't been there and, it, you know, to tell you he's just trying to help you, it, it's scary. That to both of you, um, and then that brings up an interesting question. How do you do, do you communicate similarly when you're talking to spirit? Like it, like mm -hmm. you just made the point of letting that gentleman know that he could talk, even though mm -hmm. his throat had been cut off. Um, how do you hear a voice? Do you just sort of have a sensation? Do you tele telepathically? have that communication or does it differ? It does differ. Every, every medium I believe operates a little differently than the other. Um, in certain ways that, that I hear or see anything from spirit probably might be, it might be different than how Katie does. Um, you know, it's just kind of how we are able to perceive or receive the message. And that's just because that is something that symbolizes a certain thing for me. Um, you know, that kind of thing. And of course, you know, I'm also clairaudient. Katie's got additional, uh, what I call paranormal issues with her. She's got a, a gazillion different branch offs because a lot of people don't get, you know, they say, well, psychic medium. They figure everybody operates the same. Nope, nope, no, we don't. Yeah. And then and honestly, too, with the different, what I call branch offs of abilities, 
that we have. I've I've aggravated people in investigations because I'll be sitting there with no earbud or anything, and I'll hear a spirit say, he's telling you to get away from the door. And then they'll catch that on an EVP, on a recorder. <laughs> they'll catch it as an EVP. The spirit is saying that. They're just not hearing it. But I'm able to, to hear it and say it without a recorder. Katie's that way as well, but she's also got other, what I call branch offs that uh, kind of has a multi definition to being a psychic medium. And that's just kind of how it goes. Nobody operate. I don't, I've never seen one medium or the other ever operate the same. Close, maybe. Close. You know, like visions or like movie clips or things like that or photographs or little flashes like flashcards type mm -hmm. things for me is how I operate. Um, and again, sometimes it's direct message. Sometimes it's, it's symbolisms. So it's really different uh, for each medium. So this is kind of uh, interesting. Colette uh, said, how can you tell if you have ability to feel spirit? There's a lot of different ways to feel a lot of that. Um, I couldn't put it in a broad spectrum statement on my behalf. Um, I deal more with people who are trying to define what they have as an ability easier than to try to tell them how to feel something. If you walk into a room and your body says, get the hell out, get the hell out, get out. I mean, that's your body has is its best, best paranormal meter you're ever going to know is your body. And if you have sensitivities to it, like Dave, because um, he's got high sensitivities to it. But if you have sensitivities to it, um, you know, that's a sensitive, you know, that's a person who's a sensitive. Empaths are completely different. It's easier to determine for me what a, if a person's an empath or not just by asking them four or five simple questions. I've been able to get them, go, oh, God, yeah, and oh, God, yeah, oh, God, yeah. So it's really, it's, it's easier to kind of help define it. But the thing is, I found, not to take over a lot of the conversation, sorry, Katie, but this is kind of a strictly too tall form than I did. You do it, sir. You do it. Good. it. But here's the thing. It's, it's kind of one of those things is as you mature in your abilities, things are going to become more obvious. Things are going to become heightened. Uh, the more exposure you have to the paranormal, it will actually increase your abilities or your sensitivity to your abilities. Um, and I always tell people, the more you expose yourself to the paranormal, the more your abilities will become a little more apparent than they were before. But everyone starts out with wondering what the hell they have, and then eventually they do find out what things they're picking up on. And see, the one time that I can think of that I would say – um, I had an ability that was present and I noticed it was when we were in Penhurst and I was, I was, it was very odd because I was actually filming a segment where, um, the guy who set up the entire investigation was, um, walking Janet, our, our, one of our mediums through and getting her impressions on things. And I was basically just the cameraman and, we got into a certain area and he asked her, you know, what are her impressions? And I, I just felt this horrible pain in my left ankle. And for some reason, I just spoke up and I said, you know, Tony, the guy who was living in here and this, I said, did he have a really bad injury? Yeah. So was his left ankle? Yeah. He walked with a limp, didn't he? Yeah. I don't know how I knew that. I just knew I had this horrible pain in my left ankle that I never normally had. And I just felt it was necessary at that exact moment to let them know. And right. it just that I was getting that. So well, it's literally a funny pain, thing. unfortunately. You you'll see as you go down a road some more um, you know, now that you're open to that, like things for me that are funny. I get a ringing in my ear when there's a paranormal event about to happen. I'll get a ringing in my ear. Okay. And that'll be like, oh, here we go. Something's going to happen. You know, and I've done that so many times. Um, you know, that's just kind of my little tells, as I call them, my little, my little paranormal tells when you walk into a house or anything like that. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just kind of interesting. Uh, you really can't make yourself feel spirit. But I will tell you that 68% as a national average, 68%, of the people in this world that are living have latent abilities. Okay. So you just got two out of three then, you're saying. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, these are people that have abilities, don't understand how they're operating with it, don't know how to work with it, think that they're crazy. You know, they just don't accept that that fact that they have it. Um, 
you know, I mean, sometimes it takes a real staunch paranormal trauma event to make you realize, holy crap, I was right. Before yeah. you start believing in yourself, man. People are just, you know, they're, they're everyone, everyone's becoming a medium in this world. Well, I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with education, that people are becoming a little more open to what they have yeah. or what's going on with them. But you also have to understand, too, if you put Katie and I and, and Dave and you in that house, it's going to be crazy because they will literally come out of the infinite woodwork to want to communicate because they know they have people in that house that will able to receive their communication. You I've know? actually, I have, I have a weird connection and James, you and I have talked about this in the past. Uh, that house is, is almost like a spiritual conduit. And for, after we met for weeks, I would have remote viewings. I would have yeah. dreams. I would be coming in. I would ask be ask projecting. And it's not as if I said, "Okay, I want to go to the Hoover House now." It would just happen. I know what the what the main floor looks like. I know, like I've been through that house. Yeah, and I was, and I, it's a weird. It's pictures. almost like it's a portal. Yeah, yeah, she would send me pictures. Like, do you have a radiator that looks like this? And then I'd send you a picture back. Yeah, here's the radiator. Yeah. And it wasn't as if I was focused on it. I think to go back to abilities, I always use the car effect. I always tell people, you know, think about your car, the make, model, and the, and the color. Now, think about how many of those vehicles you noticed before you purchased it. You didn't really notice them. But after you purchased your said vehicle, you noticed a lot of other vehicles like yours around. And it doesn't have to be a car. It can be a bicycle. It can be, you know, a vase or a shirt. The bottom line is you're consciously aware of what you're witnessing. And it's in your present consciousness. Um, you know, she, um, one of the viewers had mentioned, you know, how do you know if you have that? Well, one of the easiest ways to know if you have that or not is when was the last time you thought of a loved one or a loved one yeah. popped in your head? You were busy doing something and all of a sudden that loved one popped in your head. How do you know it wasn't that loved one putting the thought pattern in your head? It wasn't you thinking of that loved one. It's that right. simple. It's it's not um, it's not a hard thing to happen. It's a download. Um, in order to get better with your abilities, you have to think of uh, your abilities like a team. So, you know, if you get a bunch of, of teammates together and you decide to play a game of hockey or football, the better that your team works together, the better that each person knows each person's role or each teammate's role, the more in sync you're going to be for that game. The same thing happens with psychic abilities. When you get to understand your psychic abilities and how you're getting the downloads, how your guides are working with you, how that loved one or that, that person you're trying to communicate is trying to send messages through, the easier it's going to be. Sometimes it gets tough to your, your, you know, I call it like eating steak with a butter knife. You know, it's harder to cut through to get the download of the information. It gets a little tougher. But as you get to understand the messages you're receiving, the feelings, the emotions, the videos, the pictures, it, it becomes easier and it's almost like your own language. It's a lingo that you're able to uh, download. Essentially. Makes sense. Okay. And that, but Jim and I have preached that for years as far as uh, team chemistry, the, the better our team chemistry is with the individuals on the team um, than our collective, uh, I guess, aura that the spirits would Absolutely. see is more calming and it makes them more comfortable Absolutely. in opening up and communicating with us. Mm -hmm. I've said it time and time again in our show. <laughs> energy breeds energy. Behavior breeds behavior. So if your energy is on the right mark as, as a nucleus, it's going to operate a lot better in, in the investigation. Because they know when there's a chink in the armor. They know when the energy isn't right. And I've had them shut up until we had that person leave. <laughs> Because it just it just it operates that way. You know where you know where yep. each other's at. You know, I'm like I said, I've never met Katie in, in person either, but I know for a fact the minute her and I get together, it's gonna be click because we're that way on the show. Yeah. Jim, I that's goat. That way on the investigation. So that's that's goat, Jim, the spirit killer. Yeah. Um while we still have some time, I promise this is Dave's oldest daughter and my oldest granddaughter, Bronwyn, she's here. Uh, she helps us a lot at the house. And she's mm -hmm. sort of like our paranormal in training. She uh, oh, neat. used the cathedral stone to like open her third eye. And she's she's got some nice abilities. She's working on developing. Good. So I'm going to introduce her so she can say hello to both of you. And she had a question she'd like to ask you about. Sure. 
herself, if you don't mind. Sure. So, yeah. Molly, here, let's jump in there. Hi, Bronwyn. Um, nice I'm seeing you running back and forth in the screen. Mm -hmm. So, what's up, hon? Hi. Hi. What can we help? What can we help you with, Darlin? Um, I want to like work on like like getting more abilities, basically. Developing your abilities, yeah. becoming a little okay. more. Okay. So, what whatever advice could would you feel comfortable giving her along those lines? Work on one at a time. Um, yeah. What do you? What abilities do you feel you have? I can like sense them kind of like I I'm like a dog kind of uh, I will stare at like one room or one spot for long periods of time and that's sure. how I know I see them sensitivity okay and you've what? also seen them haven't you uh yeah I've seen a couple like so a years I've heard some I've like heard people whispering to me sometimes Okay. And that's, and that's where kind of for me the definition of you're a psychic medium or you're an empath or you're a player. Those, those what I call container labels really don't work for a lot of people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you, you've got abilities that you need more exposure on to be able to do. But I would tell you if, if you feel you want to, you know, you want to enhance those or develop those, for me, what I did years ago was I picked one. I picked one and I kind of worked on that. So if it was sensitivity, for example, I would bring myself into a room. I would sit in a chair and I would not move. And I would just feel what's going on around me and I would feel it. And it got to a point where I could close my eyes and I could map out where the spirits are in the room. But that's one way to just, you know, just kind of enhance that part of it. But if you try to do a mixed mosh of so much at one time, it's going to become convoluted, I think. And I think you really just kind of need to pick a lane and, and work on that while the other ones are, are developing on their own organically. But you need to pick a lane and then work on that to enhance that to a point where you can define what you're dealing with. Does that make sense? Okay. Katie, what do you I got? Think it's, it, I think it's so important to stay confident. I think you second guess yourself all the time. Oh, I think by second guessing yourself, you are um, humanizing it. You have to understand when we get spirit communication, when we get downloads, we are supposed to absorb the information. We're not supposed to judge it or humanize it. So it may not make sense. You may get the image of a purple balloon and you're going, what the heck does a purple balloon mean? It, you're not supposed to judge it. It may not make sense to you now, but it will in time. So you're supposed to catalog that. And I always tell people to write it down and let it go. Unfortunately, when, when you start working with your abilities, we have a we have a habit of, holding that energy and what that does is i can actually manifest and make you sick you have to learn how to become a conduit so those crystals that your grandfather gave you the meditation you're supposed to be doing the grounding practices the salts all of those things are just as important as receiving your downloads okay because if you keep holding on to those things you're gonna get sick okay and sick mm -hmm. doesn't mean like death it just means that you're gonna start to physically manifest illnesses you could get colds you could have digestive issues you could have all of those things okay and as Richard said it's really important to uh, to focus on one of one mm -hmm. ability at a time okay mm -hmm. um, if you were to go to I'm gonna pick a country if we were gonna go to Italy and I only speak English and I'm trying to get directions. So I walk up to a lady in the street and I ask her a question and she says in Italian, she doesn't understand me. Do you think me yelling louder in English is going to make her understand more? It's not. Okay. Yeah. So it's important to understand the language in which they're trying to tell you. Don't get frustrated. Don't try to humanize it and try to go slow. Take a catalog. Take a little book with you. I have a little book. I literally will write what I need to write down and I forget about it. Okay, and I, a couple days later, I'll go back and I'll go, huh, I get it. I understand what they were trying to tell me there. Do you see what I mean? So linear time is what we make on this side. There's no such thing as time on the other side. So the message that you get may be for a week. So, so if you hold it inside and think, okay, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's going to eat away at your physique, at your physical uh, energy, okay? So again, write it down, forget about it, and start realizing all of the affirmations, all the coincidences, the synchronicities, and the confirmations that you get as these things happen is going to gain your confidence for you to do more. 
Okay. I think lastly, it's so important that you never experiment on your own. And um, I try to explain it like this. When you start getting this and you open up your third eye and you're receiving the download, sometimes it becomes a little overwhelming. So I often tell people, think of yourself brushing your teeth. Okay. Everybody brushes their teeth uh, differently. Some people turn the tap on really, really quickly and the ta you know, the water's teeming out. Some people have it so the water's trickling and some people turn the tap off in between when they're brushing. You have to pick what's comfortable for you. So if you start to get overwhelmed or scared about these things, I want you to ask your guides, ask, you know, your loved ones that have passed away to dial it down for you. Picture yourself turning that faucet down to where the water's comfortable for you, okay? Because what happens is when you start receiving this information, it starts to go really quickly and you just, it sometimes it gets scary and that's not what we want for you, okay? Does that does that kind of answer your question a bit? Now let me, let me, let me give you one final point from the trucker conversationalist. Because she's beautifully spoken. She's wonderfully spoken. I don't, I don't ever want to ascertain to that level of conversationalist. Because I can't. I blow a brain fuse, okay? So I'm just going <laughs> to give it to you how I would give it to you, like if you were my own child. Because I, what I kind of get, you can tell me I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But you tell people about your experiences, and they, they don't really believe you, do they? Yeah, they're like. Uh, She's afraid to tell people. You're getting, afraid, bro. You won't tell people. From you. I'm kind of getting yeah. that people even come to close to even making fun of you, don't they? Yeah. All right. So here's my, my plan because I, I, I get that from you like from a mile away. So here's what I would suggest. Catalog your experiences like Katie said. Okay. Don't share them with anybody who doesn't understand you. If they're saying something against you for what you believe, they don't understand you. They don't need to be a part of your world right now. So you catalog your experiences. Talk to them with you know, Jim or Dave or even if you want to reach out to us. We don't care. And just reach yeah, out yeah, to people who actually can. understand what you're dealing with. That's the biggest thing is that's what's blowing your confidence level. Because you got people telling you you're, you're full of garbage or that's bunk or that's craziness or that's silly or that's not true. And you're going, it's going in here and you don't need to let that go in here. You're a very intelligent person. Mm -hmm. So you need to go ahead and, and just absorb it, catalog it, discuss it with people who understand it. That way you cannot lose your confidence in yourself to believe in your abilities and yourself to be able to do the right thing for you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. And I got a question. That's which great you. advice. I thank you both for that. Anybody, you know, new or just coming into their realization of some of their gifts, that that's such solid advice. And I, I talked to many people who at this impressionable age, uh, didn't have that kind of good advice or wasn't uh, supported by family. And uh, it's led to some scarring and bad decisions in their lives and just a lot of trauma. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it, it's not a difficult, um, it, it is a difficult mm -hmm. path. And it's really important to try to understand yourself. And, you know, we're always trying to do that. But if you're if you have some of these psychic gifts, it makes it more difficult for sure. Well, would you, would you two agree that um, if she were to keep going without slowing it down and taking it one, one download, so to speak, at a time, um, not only is that going to uh, te tear down at her confidence in what she is picking up, but it could also actually stunt her growth as far as expanding oh, her abilities and, and mastering them. Yeah, it becomes convoluted. Everything becomes convoluted. If you're getting a piece, a piece, a piece, a piece, a piece, you're not able to, to turn the direction where you want it to get the flow for one particular item at a time, and you can organize it for yourself that way. Yeah, it gets very convoluted, very confused. And honestly, you know, the thing of it is with, with kids at her age, and no offense, I know you're not really a child, but kids at her age, they suck. Um, already as it is without with life as yeah. in general, they just suck. So now yeah, you know, she's going 14, to, to talk to her friends because she's trying to share an experience and they're just kind of boohooing her stuff off. Like it doesn't matter because they don't understand it. Yeah. So, right. you know, that's the yeah. reality of it. She can contain it, catalog it, disperse the information to get the answers with the grouping that she needs to. It'll be, it'll help her a lot. It'll help From her a lot. 
Wait, think about a cake. Do you like have you you bake have you ever baked cakes or muffins or do you like to bake? Uh yeah. I okay, like so let let's get all of our ingredients. Mm. Okay, and we're gonna throw it in a bowl and we're just gonna take the bowl and we're gonna throw it in the oven and we're gonna we expect it all to work out, right? It's not gonna work out. There's there's a recipe that you have to follow in order to get what you need. Right. You have to add the eggs and add the milk and add the vanilla and add this and add that. And you have to mix it together in such a way in order to create this cake in order to bake it. So it's finished and you can eat it properly. Think of your abilities like that. You can throw everything into it, into a bowl and throw it in the oven, but it's not going to turn out as nicely. You're still going to get a pro the end product, but it's not going to be what you expect it to be. Mm -hmm. So slow down. Take your time and it will come. You're going to notice that by slowing down and kind of working on each one, it's actually going to save you time in the end. That's amazing that you say that, use that analogy, because she's been talking about maybe six or seven months now how she wants to go to culinary school. So you mm -hmm. point out a baking reference was perfect. <laughs> so, and by um, the way, you're all making me hungry, so thanks. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think yeah. something we should start Hi, doing. Hi. Is, um, I'm going to get her, like you guys said, I'm going to get her a little book so she can write down her, her, her quote-unquote pickups. And I think it would be helpful to both of us if her and I had uh, just father-daughter meditation sessions. She's being visited at night. Yes. Yes, she is. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So that cataloging at the bedside table would probably be a good place to start out. Okay. Yeah. And like I said, I think I think that would help us both if we did joint meditation sessions, just her and I. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. The only thing you have to watch with her is she suffers from a bit of depression, right? Which maybe we can go on privately, but, you know, that's something you got to kind of get ahead of. Yes. Yeah. Um, just to let you know what we'll do too, we, we, um, with the bash coming up and some other, we're going to be at a couple paracons here on the East coast. Oh, cool. uh, we'll definitely, uh, be putting the word out on your show. Uh, you guys are Thank really you. said you know, like, such just solid advice for, for everyone in the field, depending on whatever level of experience that you've already gotten to. Uh, I can't thank you all enough for um, what you do and the way you do it. It's, I, I really enjoy your show, and uh, um, I, I can't thank you enough. So we'll definitely be sort of promoting your show on at our little tables and whatnot, too. There's a, thank you. Like I said, there's a really great community that is sort of like under the headlines. You know, it's not us. It's not, uh, it's it's not front and center, but I mean, there's some just so much great work being done, and uh, I can't thank you all enough. See, it's a quick two hours. See, Richard, it is. Yeah, it, we have been it, asked to do two hours in our show too, and I'm kind of going. I don't know. It, well, like I said, a lot's the chemistry, and I mean, we we really we play on each other's experiences, and I, I just mm -hmm. I can't thank you enough. For agreeing to come on the show, I judging by the comments and stuff, the the audience really enjoyed it, and uh, we wish you all the best going forward. And you know, you have an open invitation here. So uh, thank you, guys. You guys stay healthy, stay well, and Katie, you let us know in that day as we'll work things uh, out. We'll Oh, you're going to see the smoke of me flying down the highway to see y'all. Oh, I'll be there. Don't you worry about that. Um, you know, and we, Richard and I would love to have you guys. We're going to, you know, in terms of our show, we're, we're going to, we would like to talk more about table tipping and stuff like that. So, you know, this is definitely an open invitation. I mean, you guys want to come on over. We would love to have you. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, let us know. We, um, we, you know, we're, we're very grateful and uh, dependent on the others. And we, so we, we do also appear on people's shows and discuss. So, uh, okay. absolutely. If you can reciprocate, we'd be more than glad to. Yeah, thanks, guys. Sounds good to me. Fantastic. Sounds like a plan. Cool. All right. Well, listen, I guess, Dave, you want to, we, we, I guess we're signing off. Been yeah, a wonderful thanks. night. It's so great. It this has. Been that night. It's been that time. It is. You guys have been amazing. We've had comment after comment. And uh, uh, thank you for taking the time. I know everybody's schedule is really busy. Um, so, you know, and Katie, you're doing readings. Seems like twenty four seven, and sure, he faced himself, so he's 20, not too far behind. But 
Um, we want to thank you for taking time. We had a great conversation. I think everybody, including Jim and I, got a lot out of it. And uh, we can't wait to see you guys. And um, shoot us some dates, and, and we'll jump right over on the uh, show. Have a great weekend, and stay safe. All right, you guys Thank too. you. Thank you, Thank you, night, you. Thank you so right. much, guys. Take Bye, care. Bye, guys. Thank you for joining Dave and Jim on Doorway to the Dead. Catch us next week right here at 8 p.m. every Thursday as we open the door to paranormal discussion and more.